Lovely Floss Tube friends, welcome back to the channel. A very warm welcome to you all. And for those 194 new subscribers, welcome to the channel and I hope you like what you see. I am here today for my May update. Now, I know what you're thinking, such Teresa. You know, we're well into June now, but hey, what's new? I'm late, I'm very late. This is gonna basically be a merged version. <laughs> So you're gonna have the whole of May and then we're gonna have whatever we've done of June. I think today is, yeah, the 10th of June. So there's a bit to talk about, I have to say. Since I last saw you, I have been to two retreats. I know, not one, two, two retreats. So the first one that I went to was back in May. The 12th to the 14th of May, I was at the Sedgebrook Hall Hotel at Northampton for the first ever UK Bella Filipina retreat, which was glorious. I did do my usual walk around the room and shared all the things at the, at the Bella Filipina retreat, which is a video that you will find in the retreats um, playlist in, in my channel. We saw all the goodness. I probably didn't stitch as much as I would have liked to. In fact, that's, yeah, I definitely didn't stitch as much as I would like to, but nothing new there. I spend a lot of time being a social butterfly around the room, doing recording, um, and that time actually I had raging, raging dry socket. So yeah, that wasn't fun whilst at a retreat. But that said, I have since then been off to the first ever Wrexham retreat, uh, which is run by Lynn the Lancashire Stitcher and Gina Stitches. So from the 2nd to the 4th of June, I was in North Wales having an absolute blast. The most glorious part about it is not only was it a stitching retreat, which is always great fun, but as well as the stitching retreat, we had the opportunity to go to two brick and mortar stitching shops here in the UK, which was glorious. Needless to say, I might have bought a lot of things because seeing things online and seeing things in your hand, real life, totally different, totally different. I am never, I can't say, that unless it's something really special, I can't say that I get overwhelmed or wowed by much online because I'm like, oh, it looks okay. But when you see things, you know, that have got samples that have been created or you see things in the flesh, that is a game changer, that just changed everything. So we have a lot to talk about today. So I've got obviously my whips that I'm gonna show you. We've got a new start and then we do have a fair amount of haul, I have to say. Now, I don't normally do a lot of haul on this channel because I don't do a lot of haul, but this time it will be an exception. So buckle in people. <laughs> Slightly different this time. Now. It is a glorious sunny day. It is the first of the fabulous weather here in the UK, in the sunny southeast. I say it's the sunny southeast, however, it appeared that the west of the country was getting most of the glorious sunshine. Although we had sunshine for the last week or so, two weeks, it was very, very cold because we had a northeasterly breeze, which is, yeah, it's chilly. The tables have turned, so we officially are having a little heat wave weekend. So of course I'm gagging to get outside to have a deck day because I'm missing the sun. I need my injection of vitamin D here. So I'm gonna try not to rush my way through this, but I am sort of rushing my way through this. So we'll just, we'll roll with this and we'll see how we go. So for the month of May, I was trying to follow my whip go as well as, I was calling it monogamous May with exception. But it sort of went with monogamous May with exception, with exception. <laughs> so the idea was I was gonna pick a project to stitch on monogamously, except for my whip go. Now, at first that seemed like such a clever idea and I thought I was, you know, I thought I was very clever until I realized that I had the Bella Filipina retreat. So the exception for whip go didn't include a fancy lady. So that's the reason why we've got exception with exception. So it was a monogamous May with exception to whip go and an exception of being at the Bella Filipina retreat, which meant that I needed to stitch on something Bella Filipina. So we diverted slightly, but we didn't do too bad people. Now I done on one of my live streams, I asked my fellow floss tube friends, what, what projects should I stitch on monogamously through the course of May. I'd done a poll, it was, well, I think I already knew what the answer was gonna be, but 
my fellow floss tube friends and those on the live, you all know, it ended up being evening in the park. So monogamously, when I've not been touching on Whip Go and I've not been stitching on a Bella Filipina retreat with a Bella Filipina, I have um, stitched monogamously on Evening in the Park and I am so pleased I did. So I digress. Where did we get to? So for the month of May, you'll have to excuse me, my notes are, my notes are on my lap. If the camera jiggles, I apologise. The girls are looking out of the doors and yeah, watching, watching birds. So they're sat by the legs of the tripod. Love them, love them. If you're lucky, they might get bored of that, which is very unlikely, and go sit on the bed. So what did we have? So for the month of May, we had Evening in the Park as my monogamous May project. We had Story Keep, Life is an Open Book, which required three days worth of stitching. We had my new star, Deer Creek sti Stocking. That got its allocation. We got Summer ABCs. Of course, I had to add the Bella Filipina stitching and I needed Autumn and Halloween, which was Greta Goldbroom. Now, I would say that I, I completed everything, all barring, and I say all barring, all barring Greta Goldbroom, my Autumn Halloween project required two days worth of stitching. I only managed one. So other than that, we hit the goal. So somewhere in this month, I need to get a Halloween or autumn day of stitching in so that I can basically clear and complete my May whip go. So that said, for June, my whip go is two days on my Deer Creek stocking, two days on Peacock's Lagoon, three days on a sampler, and two days on a spring small. Now, I don't have any spring smalls currently in my, in my whips. And in all fairness, you'll understand why shortly, I don't really want to start another, another one. So I might have to use my two days spring small for two days summer small. All will be uh, revealed. <laughs> So, stitching, what did I achieve, I hear you say. So let's go back to what I done in May. I will leave my monogamous May project till the end so that you can see that. Um, so first up, we have Greta Goldbrum. So Greta Goldbrum got one day's worth of stitching. Um, she is being stitched on. It's a custom piece. It's a 25 count even weave custom piece by um, Sparkly's. It's a custom piece based on Pisces. So she's got a fabric called Pisces and she just customized it a little further for me. Where we've got pictures of where you last saw it, I will input those. And this is where I got to on her. Love, love, love. She's definitely in the making, but we're not quite there yet. I think I was stitching on this part over here, trying to get some more bits and pieces done. I do love stitching on this one, love the colours. But like I say, it was, it was destined to get two days, it only got one. So that one, that one needs to come out um, again for one day. And I think I'm gonna try and fill in some more down here and try and get this bit down a bit further. But very, very happy with the one day that I did get on it. And of course, my lovely needle minder from Agnes, Agnes Needle Minders, love, love, love. So that was my first whip that I managed to stitch on. Because I went to the Bella Filipina retreat and I couldn't exactly go and not stitch on a Bella Filipina, of course, because that's, that's a given. I decided to pull out my Maiden of Tabataha. Tab, I think it's Tabataha. I always say it wrong. I can't help myself. I'll put pictures in where you last saw it. Now this one I sort of put away because I had some issues. The last time I stitched on this, I thought I'd done something wrong. And I was right to think that because I'd, I'd done something very, very wrong. So at the retreat, I, I have to confess, I did spend a lot of my time with my very good friend, Susie, unpicking and frogging out what I'd done and then restitching because I had gone very wrong. So it was a good job that I caught it when I did because otherwise it could have been an absolute mess. 
and I wasn't looking forward to, to stitching on it. So putting it away and taking the time not to pull it out, waiting until I had another set of eyes to look at it, it was a good thing. So Susie, thank you for, for helping me. I did actually, I got very upset when I realized how much I needed to frog. So I went out of the room for a little while and I think I went up to the shop. And when I came back, Susie had actually picked out and frogged out the section that we thought we needed. So I was like, oh, you love, you know, it's like, you didn't have to do that. But she was like, well, I know you didn't really want to do it. She said, so I thought I'd just quickly nip it out. So she nipped it all out for me. But then when I started restitching bits of it, I was like, hold on a minute, it's still not right. So then we had to frog another load. So yes, it was frogged. And then yes, it was restitched. But because we did that, it's true and correct now. So I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to when this comes up in my in a rotation for me to get it out and stitch on it because yeah I do love this one and seeing it stitched fully completed on the finishing table it just makes you want to finish them faster because they look glorious so here is where I've got to so we've got some of her body up here I've done some of this this was the bit that I'd gone wrong on down here so pretty much, I would say most of this section got pulled out and then I stitched on what looks like some coral type bits there. So yeah, absolutely love stitching on this one. So this one is, hmm, she says. So this one is stitched on a 28 count even, even weave by Pulse Stitches called Atlantis. I love the fabric. It's a beautiful fabric. I'm not going to take it out of its Q-snap because it takes me too long to put all of these things away. If I had more time on my hands, of course, everything would be ironed and, you know, unrolled and detached from Q-snaps. But yeah, limited time, people. It's a deck day. I need to get outside to have a deck day. So that one got, so that one got three days worth of stitching. So basically the entirety <laughs> And it was the entirety of the Bella Filipina retreat was basically unpicking and restitching. That's that's as much as, as I managed. But hey, I'm happy because it's now at a point that I can pull it back out and know that it is true and correct. So I've, I've, I took the time rather than trying to just fudge it. I took the time to pick it all out and restitch it. So I'm, I'm in a much more happy place with that one now. So next up, I have a new start. So. My new start was a long awaited new start because I made a bit of an error with the fabric. So when I wanted to start it, I couldn't because the fabric was too small. It was my error, nobody else's error. You know the old saying, measure twice, cut once. Well, in my case, it's measure twice, <laughs> go on the website and check you clicked the right fabric because I clicked the wrong size fabric. So the next one is my Deer Creek. It is a heaven and earth design and the artwork is by Donna Gelsinger. I was gagging to do this stocking and I am stitching this on 18 count magic guide in Ecru. And here is where we got to on this one. Do you know what? I've missed stitching on my 18 count. <laughs> it is so much easier to stitch. I'm doing this um, two over one full cross. It's gonna be a very big stocking, but I'm fine with a big stocking. So my Deer Creek got, it required five days worth of stitching and it got five days worth of stitching. So it's also been called for June for another two days. So this will come out, this is actually out on the stand now, ready to be stitched this month for two days. So hopefully over the next two days, couple of evenings, it will get some love. So love, love, love. The next project that I required, I was required to stitch on is my Story Keep Life is an Open Book, Heaven and Earth Design again. And this one required three days worth of stitching. And yeah, I don't think it's too bad, people. It's not too bad. Let me tension it up a little bit. Ignore all of the chaos of hanging threads. They are not, they are not, um, tidy by any stretch of the imagination but I'm fine with that and this is where I got to so where was I stitching I think I was working my way down through the red section along this section here but yeah 
it's, for me, this is very slow progress. <laughs> it's one that doesn't come out as much as I would like. This one is stitched on a 25 count Magic Guide white, and this is one over one at full cross. Absolutely love it, love the colors. I just don't get to it as much as I would like, but yeah. For me with my full coverages at the moment, I'm, I'm just getting to them either when they're coming up on whip go or when I'm feeling the love for it. So that one, like I say, that one required three days worth of stitching and it got its three day quota. So the last two whips that I worked on, I know we're already at the end of the last two whips. So the last two whips that I worked on um, for the month of May were May and have had some love in June too. So summer ABCs by Little House Needleworks was required to be stitched on. It was a small for five days. Now, I really did well for this in May because not only did I get five days, I actually got 11 days worth of stitching. This is the one that is also my train project. So I've, I've, I was using it on the train and then it's a great little small to have for doing, you know, as and when you just wanna do a spot of stitching. I don't think we did too bad on this one. So like I say, it got 11 days in May and it's already had one, two, three, four, five. It's had six days in June. Now, when I'm saying days, you know that I don't mean it's got full days on it. I don't get hours on it. Sometimes I'll get an hour. Sometimes I'll get half an hour. If I'm on a call um, at work and it's just something that I need to listen to and, and, and digest, make sure that I'm aware of what's happening and I'm not making notes, then I'll do maybe five or 10 minutes worth of like one strand. So this is where we have gotten to. Love, love, love. This, this took a little longer than I thought it would, but we are slowly getting there. And I'm rather hoping that if it's not too hot outside and I do fancy any stitching, then I think I might pull this out and see if I can get some more done on it because I'm so close. We're so close to a finish on this one that I think, I think it just, yeah, it just needs to be done. The fact that summer has actually arrived here in the UK, I would really, really love to have this finished. Finished and FFO'd because it's summer and I would like it to be hanging. I say hanging, I'm not actually gonna hang it. I have a plan for how I'm gonna finish this. And the plan came from somebody else on FlossTube where they did it. It's it's a toilet roll cupboard type stand um, and I was going to put it on the front because the Little House Needleworks do like a series of these. You've got summer, you've got autumn, you've got the needleworker, you've got um, winter and you've got spring. So <laughs> although this one's took me this long to stitch, I would like to think that if I can get round to doing um, another, another few of these, then again, I can switch these out and these will become seasonal that I can I can switch out on but love 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 I don't know if the light's blowing that out but yeah more than happy with the progress and like I say fingers crossed given that there's likely to be a lot more outdoors stitching over this month because the summer has finally arrived in the evenings when it's cooled down and I'm sitting at the deck I might have to try and pull this out and see whether I can sort of you know, get a wiggle on with this. So there is my summer ABCs. And then finally, Evening in the Park, like I say, was my monogamous stitch for May. So in May, Evening in the Park got 10 days worth of stitching. And because I was having so much fun on it, the very first part of June, it also got some love because one of the things that I really wanted to do was I was starting to worry that my border around the outside wasn't going to meet properly. And I would hate, and I, I think I was like, the closer I was getting to sort of get into the end of the border to match up to the other side, I was thinking, what am I going to do if this doesn't, if this doesn't match up? You know, is it going to be something that I can adjust if I need to? Because there isn't an option to just unpick it and restart it because there's too much of it. So. Needless to say, there was a bit of like, you know, my heart was sort of here in anticipation and I got so close to the last side that I was like, you know what, if I just do a few more nights of stitching on this, I will get this border back up to the top. 
and I will see whether we're in the right spot or not. And I am so pleased that I did because, yeah, we managed to get there. I can, I can confirm people that the ball does match up on Evening in the Park, which is the biggest relief ever because I had planned and agreed with the ladies at the October uh, No Ban Retreat that they all said that if I get it to the point that they could all stitch a tree, they would all stitch a tree for me. One, to reduce the amount of trees. I love the idea of having somebody else stitch on my project for the trees because there were so many of them. I know I've done a load of them myself, but it would be nice to have a little bit of other people's love on my project. Some people disagree with that. I love the idea. I love the concept. So, of course, it's very important that I have it ready for them to do their stitching with the trees. Ladies, you know who you are. Don't be shy now. I've got it ready for you. There is, there is no excuses now. This is very ready for other people stitching. So what have I been doing? Like I said, the plan was to just work on the border all the way around to get the border around, make sure that the border matches up. The only problem, well, it wasn't a problem. The only bit that I noticed when I got round there was the gate on the other side was out by one. So I unpicked one side of the gate, fixed the gate, and then everything was perfect. Now, you know what it's like? In all the projects that I've ever stitched on, I don't think any of them have been perfect and exactly as charted. All of them have got some sort of fudging. So the fact that I haven't had to fudge this is like momentous, you know, and it's just like, it's a moment. So I'm gonna try and show you it in full because now I've got a full border. It's, yeah, it's just, you gotta see it. So now I know this is gonna look like it's complete. It is so not complete and we are still a very long way away from having this complete, but it seems like it's closer, but there's so much more to it. So here we go, people. I can't see a thing because, yeah. We got the boulder done. So I'm trying to remember the last time you saw this one. I was working in this corner. I think I'd done this bit and possibly some of this. So all that I've done, oh, she says it's, it's a big piece. All I've done is continued across. I've done that outline um, of the petite treasure braid of the gate down here. And then I continued over to this side all the way up. Like I say, it was one out at the top here of this gate because I'd already stitched the uh, petite treasure braid of that gate. So yeah, it just needed one little adjustment, restitched this section and everything fits. Now I say I've done the border, I've not. All I've done is the gray, that all needs filling in as does, as does that side. She says, let me move it to the other side. That side needs filling in as well. So there's a lot of nice filling in stitching there when I next pull this out. But I absolutely love, and it has sort of spurred me on that it's like, Treasy, you just need to get it finished because it's too gorgeous not to. But yeah, more than happy. I've, I've, I've completed what I wanted to, which was to get the board around. Um, yes, there's a bit of snow. Yes, I could do some lanterns, which might be the next, the next choice, I think. I think that might be a good choice next. If I put the lanterns in, then it makes the spaces for the trees super, super easy for people to see. So I'm not sure whether I'm gonna go in and fill in these borders or I'm gonna do the lanterns. Um, and then I'll go back and worry about the corners and the speciality stitches and stuff last, I think. But yeah, absolutely. <sighs> relief doesn't colour it. You can't, you can't, I cannot express the relief that I had when I stitched the final few stitches on this, knowing my border matches. I do not need to panic or worry about what am I going to do now because it wasn't something that I could sort of pick out. It would have had to have been fudged in some way, but it wouldn't have been a particularly easy fudge and it would have been very, very noticeable. Very, very noticeable. So yeah, love, love, love. Feel like I've, you know when you feel like you've hit a milestone, that's how this feels. It feels like a milestone was met. 
So I'm super, super happy with that. That said, it's had its love for June and it had its love for monogamous May. So that is going to go away for a little while um, because like I say, the summer looks like it's finally arrived here in the UK. And because of that, I know I'm not going to be sitting indoors doing much stitching on big projects. If I do, it will only be in the evenings when it's cool, not when it's warm. Everything else now, I think for the next, for the next little while at least, is going to be smalls and stuff that I can take outside that I can stitch on the deck because being indoors in this house is like being in a greenhouse. The only time that I've got aircon is up here in this room. Not that I've got my aircon on now, I've got the door open. It's nice and early, it's eight o'clock in the morning here in the UK. Um, I thought I'd open the doors, let some air in, have a chat with you and try and get this video recorded. When I get this edited, who knows? Hopefully some point this week, but unlikely that you'll see it when I'm actually recording it because I've got no intentions of sitting indoors editing this video um, because it's a deck day. I need to be outside on the deck. So that is it for the stitching. The stitching is done. Now, let me check my notes. So the plan for Whip Go for June, the numbers that got called for me meant that I need two days on Deer Creek, which is already set up and on the frame downstairs at the ready. Two days on Peacock's Lagoon. So that one may be one of the ones that needs to go in my office. I'm working from home this week, so I might be able to have a lunch break and during my lunch break do a spot of stitching. The next one's called was three days on a sampler. Now I've got a number of samplers. They are the sort of thing that are on cue snaps for some of them. So again, I could use that when I'm outside on the deck in the evenings or through the day if it's if it's warm and I'm not working. So I think we will that is very achievable. Um, and like I say, the only other thing is two days of spring stroke small. Now, I'm not sure whether I'm going to switch that up to two days on a winter small or whether I'm going to use my summer ABCs as my spring small because, yeah, I'm sort of gunning to get that finished. So I don't think that's necessarily cheating. I can't stitch on a spring small if I don't have one without a new start. I don't really want a new start you'll find out why in a minute. Um, so therefore, I think it makes more sense to utilize what I've got. So instead of it being a spring, it will be a summer because I'm already, I already have a small summer. So that is the plan for Whip Go. The plan is to meet all my goals and also get my extra day for get Greta Goldbroom in this month, which will then clear me and complete me for May. So think we're doing too bad people we're we're staying on board I think we're staying on track for my whip go like I said my whip go can't be rigid and fixed it has to have a little bit of flex like I say just because the number was called in May as long as I've completed it at some point during the year then as far as I'm concerned it still met its goal so doesn't need to make it within the month it would be nice and that's what I aim for but if it's not possible Bit of bend and flex, bit of bend and flex. So that is it for the stitching. That is it for, you know, what we, what, what my plan is for this coming month. Um, next up is my haul. Now, if you're not a haul lover, I, I appreciate there's a lot of people that don't like haul. I don't do haul very often on this channel, not to this, this vast extent. Um, but this, this was different because like I say, I went to brick and mortar shops, which is, yeah, they're very far and few between here in the UK. And I was totally wowed. I did post a video of um, my time at the Wrexham retreat. You'll find that in my playlist retreats. Um, that's the last one that I went to. And like I say, we went to two shops. We went to see Mary um, at Create Nostalgia. Absolutely glorious. She is a lovely, lovely lady. And then we headed off to Chris at the Nimble Thimble. And yeah, wowed in that shop too. And Chris was lovely. It was a delight. Now. I only have footage of the Nimble Thimble. The reason being was when we went in to create Nostalgia, there was, it's, it's a smaller shop than Nimble Thimble and there was a lot of people in there and it would have been almost impossible for me to try and record with all the people that were in there. So I didn't actually have the privilege of recording any footage of when I was in Create Nostalgia. But that said, 
me and my girls that, that I was at the retreat with, that we were sort of hanging, hanging out with and, and shopping, um, I think we've all agreed that we definitely will, will be going back um, at some point. Not this year, probably, probably next year. But when we do go back, I will be, I will be making sure that I try, if I can, if I can kick everyone out the shop, to do a little whip round in the Create Nostalgia shop as well. Because, yeah, there was lots of goodies there too. I just didn't have the opportunity to record. So, sorry, Mary, I didn't get the opportunity to record in your shop this time round, but I will next time. So, since as I haven't seen you for so long and I've had two retreats, there's two lots of haul. So, I'm going to break down the haul because they're from two different places. So, whilst I was at the retreat at the Bella Filipina, of course, it was the Bella Filipina and they done a special design for us UK stitchers um, who were attending the first Bella Filipina retreat. It's called Sunrise Cove Mermaid. Here it is. Don't know if it's too glare. This was a special that was created by Drin um, so that we could, we had something special to stitch for the first UK Bella Filipina retreat. As part of that, I got that. Megan from Coffee Craft Fabrics did some special fabric specifically for this design. I didn't go with the one that was actually called for. I went with a slightly different one. So I have gone with this one. She doesn't have names for her fabrics. This one is a pearlescent 28 pound opal even weave. I don't know if you can see any sparkles in there, but yeah. Love, love, love. Let me show you. I don't know if it's bleaching out or not. I can't see from here. But I bought, my, well, I bought myself this fabric. I, I quite liked the look of this one for that chart. I won't be starting it just yet because, yep, yeah, I've got more, I've got more fancy ladies than I know what to do with currently. Um, it, it will be one that I will stitch. Also, whilst I was there, I picked up all of the threads. So all of the threads for that chart. So it is kitted, it's all ready to go. These come from Marnie's Mixed Bag. So that one is charted and ready to go. You know how much I love a bag and I love a project bag. You probably would have seen this on the video, but Susie was there. She does the lovely project wallets. I love these for when I'm traveling. So these are perfect for traveling. So here's mine. Absolutely gorgeous. Love the fabric. And then when you open it, it's perfect. It's got two zip vinyl front pockets, like so, on both sides. And then inside of there, there is another two pockets on the inside which is perfect for my traveling projects. So when I go on the train, I've got like a, a rucksack. This goes in my rucksack with my projects in. I could put a project one side, I could put a project the other side. I actually managed to get my nine by nine Q-snap in there at the back and then all my threads and chart, chart one side and threads this side and then the, the Q-snap disappears inside there. And yeah, everything's safe and sound. Absolutely love these, these are perfect for my Perfect for my train stitching and for my traveling stitching. And you know, like when I nip upstairs and I wanna do some stitching, I'll bring this. I'll bring this one with, with whatever's in it. Um, also while I was there, the trendy, the trendy craft art Naomi was there with some of her gorgeous, gorgeous bags. Of course, you can't help yourself. Um, I've got a little scissor, scissor keep, and I also got a nice grime guard. I do love her grime guards because they're nice and wide. So if I've got lots of fabric, which I tend to have more fabric than I actually need for my project, um, it holds a lot more of the fabric rather than just worrying about guarding and keeping it clean around the outside. It's actually sort of looks after all that extra fabric that I have. So I got that as well. So as well as purchasing my lovely project travel, travel wallet, travel thing, um, I also got from Susie this. I was, I saw it, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to have that because it's just had my name written all over it. How colourfully bright and pink is this? How can you not? 
How can you just, how can you not? Look at that. I love it. Love, 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 love. There's the back. It's got vinyl, but it's not vinyl all the way. I love the fact that it's, it's vinyl with like a, with the sides on it. And what I also like about Susie's bags is they're quite deep at the bottom. So, you know, sometimes when you, by the time you get lots of stuff in there, it's sort of, you end up with like a bulge in the middle and it's, it's, it's a slim at the bottom. This one's actually got a big wide bottom on it. So love. Susie, what can I say, my lovely? Gorgeousness, gorgeousness. And you must have known, you must have known that I was, I was gonna be all over this because yeah, it just, it had my name all over it. It's so pink, it's so me. Love the colors. Yeah, love. So of course I bought myself this bag. If I was ever worried that I didn't have enough bags, I'm slowly but surely building my collection of bags, that's for sure. Also, Naomi, the crafty, the, trend, the trendy crafter, she had her usual big bottom bags. I couldn't resist this one. Beautiful, it's got, it's got fairies on it. It's got a little fairy charm pool. Spots on the inside. Lovely big bottom bag. Perfect for my bigger projects when I'm stitching at home. So love, love, love. So we got that one. And we also got another one, which I absolutely love. This one. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, Whilst I was at the Bella Filipina retreat, I might have fell down a rabbit hole with buying some more lovely ladies. Not that I'm gonna be stitching them just yet. I need to clear what I've got because I've already got I've already got quite a few on the go. Um, I did buy some fabric for one that I think I'm gonna use. Um, again, it was Coffee Craft Fabrics. It's a 28 count even weave opal. Here it is. Love, love, love. I think you can see the sparkles of this one. I think. Love this fabric. There we go. And I thought that this fabric would go gloriously for my new charts that I purchased. So let's just fold this back up so that it's nice and tidy. So I bought these charts with the intention that it's nice to have them at the ready if I want them. So we got the Queen of Flower Fairy. Here she is. Sorry about the glare, people. It's getting very sunny outside, I have to say. So we've got this one, Queen Flower Fairy. We got Pontus and Thalassa, I think it is. It's like a his and her one. Absolutely love that one. I'm not taking them out of the cellophane because they're gonna go in the drawer until I'm ready to stitch on them, which is not now, <laughs> Any, anything but now. Um, love, love, love this one. This one is, yeah. And then because I saw this one stitched up and was over, overwhelmed by it, it is Aquila, Queen of the Skies. She is divine, absolutely divine. Sorry about the glare, like I say, it's too sunny now, but, Love, love, love. There we go. Love, love, love. Now, Bella Filipina have just brought out a new chart of another mermaid. Lots and lots of people on Insta and Facebook have linked, have basically sent it to me as if I didn't know it was there. I do know it's there. I'm just, I'm trying to be good. Trying. Inevitably, I will get it probably because she is glorious. She is absolutely divine. Um, but yeah, you see the dilemma I'm in. I've got lots of whips. I've got lots of charts. Um, do I need another one just yet, given that I've got lots of things to finish stitching? So I'm like, I don't like to buy lots of haul if I've got no intentions of doing anything with it in the, not immediate future, but within like a year. Because I'm like, well, then within another year, something else will come out and I'll be wowed by that. And then I'm gonna have all this stuff that, I'm like, well, it was lovely at the time, but I actually, like this now because yeah it's a thing isn't it we, I mean don't get me wrong yes you can be a collector of charts 
There's absolutely nothing wrong with being the collector of charts. Um, but you need the room for that. And given that my, my room currently is a craft room slash spare room slash office, there's only so much room. So I can't afford to start going down there chart collecting with no intentions of actually stitching on them because I'm on limited space. For now, at least. You never know. One day, if the children ever move out, then I'll have all the space in the world. Then it's a whole different thing altogether. But again, I'm not a great lover of spending money on things that are just going to sit in a cupboard. So that's the reason that I don't have much haul on this channel very often. Um, yes stands and frames and things like that because they're the things that I use all the time. They, you know, they get lots of use. But things like charts, um, fabric slightly different because with fabrics, I like to think, well, you know, if, if I want to have a new style, I would love to be able to just go, right, okay, I'll pull the threads, there I go. I've got some fabric, I've got lots of fabric to choose from, so I'll pick the fabric and I can start a new project. However, probably my smallest amount of stuff that I own is my fabrics. So I am at the moment waiting patiently to see if I can get on. I think there's um, a Fabric of the Month Club with Patchwork Rabbit because I'm quite liking to sort of go to the slightly higher counts now. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm looking to get onto that, but I'm, I'm on the wait list. So, and I did, I think I, I originally was joining the Fortnite Fabrics. Unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond their control, Fortnite Fabrics are now not doing a Fabric of the Month Club. Um, they're doing a fabric that you purchase. Obviously, for me, purchasing it all in from, from the US, I could do that on a monthly basis, but the reality of that is it's unlikely that I would, um, just because it's not something where someone else picks the colour for me and then they just ship it. Um, I loved the concept of Fortnite Fabrics. I loved the fact that they did, they did sort of like the, the pastel colours um, or the neutrals, I think they called it, because a lot of the things that I like to stitch on are more neutrally. And then every now and then I love a big pop of colour. So in some respects, being on a Fabric of the Month Club with some of the designers, a lot of them are really quite vibrant, bright fabrics which is great for those one-off projects where actually I need something bright or you know, colorful such as the Atlantis for my um, maiden. But in general, for bits of fabric that I'm looking for, 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 things, like, for things like this and for other things, I tend to go, I tend to go with, the, with the more muted neutrals. So therefore I was trying to find a neutrals version. So, like I say, I'm on a wait list for patchwork, patchwork Rabbit, so we'll see how we get on with that. If not, I might have to think of something else. I did look at pole stitches, but with pole stitches, I'm limited with the, with the high count. They only go up as high as 28, I think, or 32. And I was thinking more sort of like the 36, I think, is what I was thinking. Um, but like I say, who knows? I could change my mind tomorrow. <laughs> the last bit is the haul that I got whilst I was at the Wrexham retreat. And yeah, yeah, it was dangerous, people. Very, very dangerous. But it had to be done. I don't do it very often. I completely sport myself and I was so excited that, yeah, what can I say? It's just, there's lots of goodies. So I'm going to apologise about the rustling now because they're in big paper bags. So I'm going to try and do this without too much rustle, if I can. So first things first, Create Nostalgia, the lovely Mary, she came uh, from the shop and came to the retreat, looked at all of the stitching and done us like a little goodie bag. So I've got Create Nostalgia badge, a little card and some lovely little sweeties in a little organza bag. So whilst I was at Create Nostalgia, Let's go to Create Nostalgia first. I have Ellie Welly Stitcher to blame for this because she done a, she done a little cushion pillow that I was absolutely wowed by. And I said to her, have you still got that chart? And she was like, no, I did it in a giveaway. And I was like, oh, thanks. Um, it is the Erica Michaels Stitch All The Things. I love the cushion. And like I say, the only reason I went with this is because the lovely Ellie Willie Stitcher stitched this cushion and I was just like, I need a cushion. 
I'm the only Christian that says that. But I also really quite like the uh, berry as well because, well, you know, I, I, like a, I like a berry. I don't like finishing the berry, but I like a berry. So the only thing that I couldn't get my hands on was the, um, the ruler type trim. But I'm sure I can, I can find some of that somewhere. So yeah, so I bought myself that pattern. And then I was thinking more about Christmas type things and what am I going to do for Christmas. And I ended up going with these because I was thinking these could be, these could be his and hers for Christmas. So it is the Liz Matthews Hello series. And I, I went with these um, Days of Christmas samplers and trees. So I thought these two go together quite well. So first one is fourth day of Christmas. Here you go. And I like this triangle. And then I really, really love, and Lauren, my daughter, really, really loves the seventh day of Christmas, which is the ones with the, I think they're swans. So I thought like for a his and hers as a set, those two go really well together. Really, really well together. So I got those two. Because I was thinking, well, they don't look like there's that much stitching in. I don't think it's as little as I think it is, but I, th I think it's, it's not too shabby. And then another set that I saw that I thought really worked together as well is the Sixth Day of Christmas. Um, it's the one with the, I, th I think that's like a goose, a goose in a bowl, which was a little disturbing because I was thinking, well, it's almost like we're serving him up for dinner. Um, but there's that one. And then the one that I thought would go really well for a his and hers is the second day of Christmas with the two, I think they're, they're doves. But I thought those two go really well together. So I could do two of them and do them as a, as a his and hers Christmas gift. So I quite like that idea. So that was what I purchased when I was at Create Nostalgia. And like I say, there was a lot of people in the shop at the same time. So it was really difficult to, to have a little look through because, because like it was, you know, I was sort of crouching down on the floor looking at the charts and someone was trying to get, get behind me so then I had to keep standing up and then I forgot and lost where I was. So it was a little bit, it was, there was a lot of navigating going on in, 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 the, in the shop. Um, so that was what I got from the lovely Mary at Create Nostalgia. I do tend to buy quite a few Christmassy type things from her, um, online um, around Christmas time. So no doubt there will be more coming my way from, from the lovely Mary. Then we headed off to Chris at the Nimble Thimble. Ah, oh, yeah. There was sofas there. There was, she opened the, the French doors and there was a little table and chairs. The weather was on our side, so it was glorious sunshine. It was lovely and warm. So we sat out there, had a cup of tea, you know, overlooking the lovely scenery and the trees. Yeah, it just made the experience so much better. So what did I get whilst I was there? I might have gone on a bit of a crazy mission, people, because I didn't just go once, I went twice. So I went once with the girls, which you saw on the recording. And then I had a car friend, a car buddy, Susie, who lives quite local to me. So she, she came home with me in the car for a lift. But before we left, she was like, I was thinking about maybe going back. I was like, going back where? And she was like, going back to Nimble Thimble. And I was like, oh yes, let's do that. So literally the day that we left, because we considered it en route, it's not, it's slightly off route, but we, we, we decided it was en route. Um, we then headed back to Chris at Nimble Thimble. So I had two shopping experiences. And of course I thought, try and control yourself the first time. And then because everything that I tried not to take on the first time, I actually picked up the second time. So yeah, like I say, bad. Bad. So the first thing I got, which is rather unusual for me, but I've seen lots and lots of things that are really lovely stitching on this type of fabric. So this is mocha. It's a linen. I grabbed myself just a just a portion of it so that I can stitch. I can stitch some smalls. I can stitch some bits and pieces on it. Um, so I grabbed myself some of that because that's not the sort of thing that I would normally stitch on, as you know. Um, so I decided I would get myself some of that. And at the moment, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm loving it. So that is mocha. So I got myself some fabric. 
and then I was, whilst I was there, I was trying to think, right, okay, I don't want to think too big, she says. <laughs> I tried, people, I tried. Um, and then I was thinking more about sort of Christmas, because I was thinking, okay, I'm planning on Christmas in July, because it's summery, and I'm like, they're the sorts of things that I could stitch sitting on the deck or under the umbrella or in the evenings. So the fact that I don't want to leave all my Christmas gifts till the, the last minute, which is what normally happens, I decided that I would, um, I would get lots of Christmas things. So I got these really, really cool Leela Studio. Um, they're like Christmas jumper finishes. I think these are the ones that Vonna, the Twisted Stitcher, has got um, flat fold tutorials on. So I got these. So it's the it's the red and the blue, the Christmas jumpers. I thought, you know what? They're quick stitch. Depending on how hard they are to finish, which if I follow Vonna's um, tutorial, I'm sure they they won't take that long and they won't be that difficult. It's more the shape, I think, is is the issue. Um, so yeah, I was like, these would stitch up really quickly. I could use them as train stitching or deck stitching, have them all stitched, stitch them all, and then do like a, a day of finishing and just finish them all at the same time. It's think, that's what I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that would be, I mean, that would be like four sets of finishes there for his and hers for Christmas. So yeah, that's, that's on my radar. Whether it actually happens or not, I don't know, but Christmas in July, I'm loving that idea. Um, so I got those. Also, because I found that these were like a very, very quick last minute, last minute Christmas present idea, um, I done my little sledges last time with the uh, woodland, oh, I think it was woodland birds for Christmas. Um, I decided that I would pick up the Let's Go Sledging 12 Sledge Ornament Designs um, by Annie Bees. Here they are. Don't know if you can see that because there's a lot of glare now. But basically, it's lots and lots of small little designs to stitch on the perforated paper to put on the sledges. So if I get caught short and there's, there's something that I need to stitch, you know, last minute Christmas presents or, or even for myself, um, these are a really good, a really good, okay, quick stitch for a small Christmas present. I think they're perfect. Um, then we may have fell down a rather large rabbit hole, people, because for those of you that watched the video of the Wrexham retreat, you will know there was lots of things in that shop that I was looking at. I couldn't help myself. Let me take these out of their boxes. Hold up. These were just to die for, so I needed to get them, and they were two trays. Hold up. Let's turn them around. So they're like, so she's cut me the backing board and the interfacing. So I've got those in there at the ready to finish. And this brown one goes with the shepherd's bush gather moments stitching tray. There you go. Because I was just like, that's gorgeous. And it comes as a kit. Look, I've got the threads. I've got a needle, I've got the beads, and I've got the fabric. So it's all ready to go. The whole thing is just stitch it and make it easy, right? I was like, I love, I love, I love that one. That one might be mine. <laughs> that one might not be a gift. And then one that I was thinking would be ideal for like a Christmas type project that I could either keep or give away. Again, it's the Shepherd's Bush Merry Little Christmas. So here's the design. And then, yeah, it fits into the, it fits into the butt, into this, into the tray. So I absolutely love that. And again, it's a kit, the threads, the needle, the beads, the fabric. Easy. And I'm like, these are the sorts of things that I need to be looking at. Cause I can, you know, I can do these things when I'm on the train or I can do these things when I'm sitting on the deck. There's absolutely no reason why I have to do big, big projects all the time. And at the moment, I am being very drawn to these sorts of things, like the smaller things, because they're more doable at the moment with the way my life is. So, yeah, I absolutely love those. So I got those. Then we also got um, Heart in Hand 
Christmas Tiny Town. Love this one. I've never actually made anything into a drum, so I don't know how I'll get on with that, but I could try. I can try. Um, what else did we get? I also got the um, Erica Michaels Quaker Wisdom Berries. Here we go. Went on a bit of a berry thing because again, they're quick to stitch and this, they, each, each berry, so there's three berries there and one says live simply, the other one says expect less and one says give more. Again, really, really good idea for a present. Um, potentially, I was thinking that I could stitch something like this for my boss and do all three so that he's got them, but I'm not quite sure what he would do with berries that aren't Christmas themed, whether he would just sort of have them laying around. I don't know. They're the sort of things that you'd put in a dough ball. So maybe, maybe, maybe I should stitch those and keep those for myself, but who knows? I loved it. I loved the fact that they were quick stitching um, but I also liked the fact that it said, live simply, expect less, give more. Yeah, like that. So I purchased that. Um, because I purchased the 12 sledge things, we bought a load of sledges. So I've got sledges as like last minute Christmas decorations or for myself, I don't know yet. Um, but I was thinking more of a case of if I get caught short, I haven't got either enough time to do stitching or, you know, I've forgotten somebody, I could stitch up one of them small little things on perforated paper and stick it on one of these and it makes a good little Christmas present. You don't feel like you've forgotten anyone. So I bought myself a number of those. So I had a little stash. And what else did we get? We also got... Now, I, the only reason I got these was because I saw these hanging up in the Nimble Thimble and oh, I was, I was overwhelmed. Absolutely overwhelmed with these. Absolutely love them. So again, Shepherd's Bush and this one's called She Tens. Here it is. Now, a lot of people are sort of sitting there going, oh, they're lovely little cushions. I like it where it's in the frame. Now, we can, I'm going to take it out of its, I'm going to take it out of the cellophane so you can see it because it's getting very shiny in here. Um, the framing, the matte boards are actually printed or, or painted, I'm not quite sure. There you go. Um, they've actually got painting and printing. Now, I was thinking, well, I think it only looks that good because it's got that, but Chris at Nimble Thimble can get me the can get me this, the, the mat boards for this. Whether, whether she just get me the mat boards and sends them to me and then I take it to my own framers or whether I send the whole thing to her and let her frame them. Um, I'm not sure yet, but I'm definitely gonna do this. Um, so I got this one. What I like about this is at first I was like, well, how do you know where to stitch? That's four individuals. So I've got four very small pieces of fabric in here. I've got all of the charms for this. All of the charms are these lovely sterling silver charms. Look at those. Lovely little sterling symbol charms to go on there. So we got those. And they're very small bits of fabric which I can stick in my little six by six Q-snap. Perfect for the train or on the deck. See, six by six, I think, I don't know, I'm not sure that that will fit in an eight by eight, but definitely a six by six. Worst case scenario, I can just add some fabric around the outside so that it goes onto a Q-snap to speak up. But yeah, six by six Q-snap, that will fit in, I think. Um, and then again, some super easy, some super easy stitching. Four little small finishes. Love that idea, love that idea. And the fact that you can have them so that they're actually, um, they're on that, on that mat board, because I think the mat board really makes it for, for that piece, unless you're gonna do them as cushions. So I got that. Again, all I need for that is the threads. That's it, because everything else is in there. So love that. Um, and then finally, she says, finally, that these are the three purchases that I tried to be good people. I really, really tried. I failed miserably, failed miserably. So 
I decided that after lots of pontification about what I was going to do about my boss's leaving present, the fact that he's leaving towards Christmas time, I was like, well, then I just need to do something Christmassy because he loves Christmas anyway. I decided that I would get the Shepherd's Bush um, Robert stocking. And instead of writing Robert, I'll put David's name at the top. Um, and this is the one that I'm talking about. And what I like about this is the fabric. The fabric is like massive, massive holes. Um, and from what I can gather, you stitch over two on this. Um, and you can either do it, the called for is um, DMC Perlay. I decided that I was going to go with that. They did say that you could use normal DMC and just use four strands. She also gave me some rather large needles because um, she said you don't need to stitch with small needles. So size 22 needles is absolutely perfect for this. It'll be perfect for the, for the, pearl, the pearl cotton. Um, and it comes with all the charms. So I've ordered the threads already. My plan is this will, this is going to have to be dedicated train stitching as soon as I get the fabric, uh, as soon as I get the threads, because I need to have this done before he disappears. And I think he's looking to disappear in November. And I need to have this completely stitched and ready to go by September because a very, very lovely friend of mine has agreed that she's gonna actually turn it into the stocking for me and quilt it so that it's a quilted stocking that's usable. Um, so yeah, so I need to get a wiggle on with that. So that will basically become my predominant train stitch until it's done because, and it's super easy to stitch on the train because look at the holes in that fabric. It's huge, it's huge. So I got, I got that, it, it yeah. I thought that was the best option. He loves Christmas. He's leaving towards Christmas and it's masculine. All right, we can make it masculine, so it's fine. The next rabbit hole, you would have seen this on the retreat video if, if you haven't seen it already, is the Wichel um, Afghan family farm. Here it is. Now, I've never thought about stitching on an afghan before. It's never been on my radar. Um, and until I saw this in the flesh, it wasn't on my radar. But once I saw this, it was so on my radar. <laughs> so I got the chart, but I also got... Now, I might have to stand up to show you this because this afghan material is gigantic. And this is the fabric for the right size for the afghan. So here's the afghan. It's got this lovely red, red designs for each of the dividers. Now, I think I'm gonna have to stand up. Let me stand up so I can show you how big this fabric is. Let me go behind, hold up. Okay. So this is the fabric. <laughs> it's huge. It's like a tablecloth. It's bigger than me. I mean, look at that. It's absolutely humongous. So it's not a small project by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I was like, I, I saw it, I saw it hanging. It was, it was hung on a wall, quilted. And I have to say, I was absolutely in love. Absolutely in love with this. I have no idea where I would hang it in my house because it doesn't go with my decor, but I'll find a way. I'll find a way and I'll find a place because it's just, it's, yeah, it's too nice not to. Um, I don't think I would turn it into a throw just because I think, I think it looked really good as a wall hanging. Like I say, I have no idea where I'd put it in my house, but if it come to it, it could go in my stitching room, couldn't it? I, you know, I can, I can make it fit. I will make it fit because, and what sold it to me, there was two, there was two. There was one called Harvest Something, and then there was this one. But what really did this one for me is that tree and that house. That tree and that house just sold it for me. And then when I brought it home and I showed it to Lauren, although Lauren agreed it doesn't fit with, 
it doesn't fit in with our house theme. She turned around and she was like, oh, mum, she said, see that product stall down there? So I was like, yeah. She went, that's just like the product stall that, stall that you get on Sims because obviously she's a YouTuber and, and she's a Sims YouTuber. Um, she's a YouTube commentator. So the fact that she was like, she's like, oh, it goes with the Sims as well. So I was like, yeah, well, it, was, it was meant to be then. So needless to say, I'm not the only one to have got that. So there will be a bit of an Afghan stitch along happening. Um, so everyone's sort of like, I'm like, well, so when's everyone's going to start this? Because I need to make sure I've got all the threads for this. Um, and everyone's like, well, you know, I can't start mine till I've got my threads and blah, blah, blah. So I have no idea when we're planning on starting it. Um, likelihoods are it probably doesn't make sense to be starting it in the months of June, July or August because it's, it's roast, it will be roasting over here. You don't want a blanket over you whilst you're trying to stitch. Um, so I would probably say that we're looking after September time. Um, but I want to make sure that I've got all the things so that we're ready, we're ready to go. But I am absolutely itching to stitch on that. Like I say, never in a million years have I ever even considered an Afghan. Certainly not even looked at an Afghan. And then I saw one and I bought one. So there you go. It just goes to show you what rabbit holes you can fall down just going to a brick and mortar shop. And then finally... For those of you that know me, been on this channel for like forever and you know what I'm like and we I've talked about this on many occasions. Um, I went to the No Ban Retreat, I think, last year and someone was stitching on a Halloween theme stitch and I'm like, normally Halloween, I'm a bit particular about what I would stitch on. And there was this one project where I just thought, I was like, oh, I don't know why, but I really, really like the idea of this one. But it's huge. It's probably not the sort of thing that I would normally go for. But I was, you know, when I saw it and I saw it stitched and yeah. And there was lots of people that go, go get it, Teresa, go get it. And I'm like, no, no, I need to show some restraint. Well, the restraint went out the window because I found it as a kit whilst I was at Nimble Thimble. I wasn't the only one to look at it. I do believe that... Um, there was someone else that actually got it and that sort of made me think, oh, well, if she got it, then why can't I get it? It is the Glendon Place um, design, the Poltergeist Pirates ship. <laughs> it's so unlike me, but I, I was just, I have to have, I, I loved it when I first saw it stitched and, and I still love it. You can't see it in this wrapper, can you? Oh, it's all stuck together. Hold on. Oh no, it's, it's still in cellophane inside. You know which one. I'll put a picture up so that you can see it. But what I loved about this is it came as a kit and it came with the glorious fabric. Look at that fabric. It's got all the splots on it. It's like a winter, winter finish type thing. Absolutely love that. It's got all of the threads. What's not to love? What can I say? I spent a lot of money, I had an absolute blast. I've now destroyed the room because everything's all on the floor around me. But at least now I can put all of my, my beautiful haul away um, and get myself out and start having my deck day. So thank you so, so much for watching. And thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already, please don't forget to hit the little subscribe button. Give me a little thumbs up. Let me know you like it. Um, like I say, I don't do haul very often. I've gone a bit over the top with the haul this time. That's not going to happen now. I'm going to be a very good girl. Now it's all about the stitching and it's all about the, the, you know, the doing all the things rather than buying all the things. That said, we are now in what I call summer here in the UK, of which case, like I say, most of my stitching sort of goes downhill. I have been putting out a lot more live streams uh, over the last few months. The hot weather will make it so that that may not be the case going forwards through the summer months because it gets way too hot here. I'm not going to sit indoors at like 70, 80 degrees at 7 o'clock at night um, roasting with all these computers and lights on me. So for those of you that love the live streams, I would love to sit there and tell you you're going to get a live stream all the time. It's not going to happen. The summer is here. There are lots of family commitments and stuff that we tend to do on Sunday evenings and Sunday afternoons, you know, barbecues and, you know, family over, that sort of thing. So likelihoods are that the live streams will not nosedive completely, but there won't be, there won't be as regular. 
if and when I get chance to do Stitch With Me's, I will put those in place of the live streams, but there will be occasions where there won't be anything. But that's because, yeah, I'm living, I'm living the best life, right? So, you know, when I, when I can do the live streams, I will, but I love the summer. I love the summer. I love my garden. I love the sunshine. I love spending time outdoors. Um, we don't get to do it very often here in the UK. So when we do, we sort of grab it with both hands. So I hope you are all having some glorious weather um, and that you're getting lots and lots of stitching in and you're doing all the wonderful things. Like I say, I'm living my best life right now. Um, on that note, I need to go and yeah, get all this put away and get myself outdoors in that gorgeous sunshine and spend my weekend chillaxing. Thank you so, so much for coming and hanging out with me. Sorry about so much haul, but for those that love haul, then there you go. We got a haul for once in our lives. It won't be happening on a regular basis. On that note, I'm gonna call it people. I need to get outside in that gorgeous sunshine um, and go and lay on my deck and have my deck day. So I wish you all very well. I hope you all have a wonderful stitchy June and I will see you again in July, if not sooner. So until next time, people, Bye-bye for now.